Good morning, and welcome to our May 24th, 2020 First Presbyterian Church, York, South Carolina worship service, the seventh Sunday of Easter. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we will pause and not take for granted as many things in life we do take for granted. We will not take for granted the men and women of our wonderful country who have paid the price of their lives for our freedom. God bless them. Uh, we ask for your continued prayers for Kenny and Ellen Green in their health journey. And I also have uh, an announcement to make. Uh, most of you have received in the mail already uh, a, an announcement uh, about our arrangements for a congregational meeting. I will read this and may have a comment or two, but it's very important that I let you know that we will have a congregational meeting on May the 31st at noon. Don't get excited. It's not going to be here in the sanctuary. It will be a Zoom meeting. The purpose of the meeting is to vote on the calling of a minister. Hallelujah. This meeting will be a virtual meeting use, using Zoom webinar. You should have received a letter this past week with some information about the candidate, the terms of call, the statement of faith, as well as information about using Zoom and balance, ballots for voting and the procedures for voting. If you need assistance with Zoom, please contact the office prior to May 27th. Leave a message if there is no answer and someone will get back to you. We plan to have a trial Zoom session, not a session meeting, a trial Zoom meeting this Sunday, May 24th at noon. You should have received an email invitation for this meeting or for this trial. Uh, if not, please contact Sonia Lee or Susan Lee Ballard and we will give you the invitation prior to Sunday's trial run. It's important uh, to understand that you must attend the congregational meeting on May 31st at noon. You must attend that meeting in order to be able to vote. Uh, just like a congregational meeting here in our sanctuary, you must be at the congregational meeting in order to vote. Therefore, you must be a participant in the Zoom meeting in order to vote. And um, arrangements can be made to, for groups, uh, whatever they could be several people uh, at one zoom lo one computer location it's i've had done a couple of these it's not too bad uh, you'll like it um, so that's the extent of our announcements and now for our call to worship we come from a world of darkness into christ's world of light we come from a world of weariness into God's strength and hope. We come from a slumbering world strengthened by the Spirit. We come to awaken our souls and watch for the coming Christ. Let us worship the Lord.
let, <clears throat> let us pray. Again, O oh Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, we give you thanks for all those who have served our nation, for all those who have served in our armed forces. And most certainly do we give you thanks for those who have served and died. We thank you for those soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen and Coast Guardsmen who left home. Many of them never to return. Some buried in foreign soil, some home again amongst us. O oh Lord, we rejoice indeed that we have a nation that is worth defending. A nation that seeks justice and mercy for all. A nation that is guided by democratic values. That indeed, O oh Lord, we are a nation who truly strives to seek justice and love mercy and walk humbly with you. A place where all are welcomed, rich and poor, young and old. We are a melting pot O oh Lord, we pray that you will enable us all the more to be a nation among nations. To set the example of compassion and mercy. Of caring for our fellow human beings. Again, Lord, we thank you for those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And again, Lord, we pray this morning that you will be with this congregation as it moves forward in the process of calling a minister. That together, uh, this church will move forward to do the new things that you intend for it to do. The new opportunities of service and ministry, of gathering in the harvest that is at our door. O oh Lord, may we indeed be guided by your Spirit, enabled by your love and mercy. And Lord, again, we pray that you will bless and keep all those who have lost loved ones to this deadly virus that is among us. And for those who are battling against it, be with us, Lord, as we strive to fashion a new lifestyle. Enable us to be all the more concerned about each other and to all the more love our neighbors as ourselves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I want to talk to you today about time. How many of you can tell time? It's great when you learn how to do that. Did you know that there are many ways to tell time? We can use watches or clocks or phones. Even the seasons of the year tell us what time it is, tells us what time of the year it is. So what season is it right now? It's spring. I think I heard people guess that. I think you are right. It is spring. And so how do we know that? One way we can tell is that the leaves on the trees have appeared 
Remember just a few months ago when all the trees were bare? And flowers have bloomed? And I can hear lots of birds singing? All of these things are so beautiful. In fact, I'm standing right in front of a magnolia tree with all the flowers on it. They're so pretty. I believe we see God in each season of the year. In the spring, we see the new leaves and flowers. In the summer, we see lightning bugs. In the fall, God gives us beautiful, colorful leaves. And in the winter, snowflakes. And all of those things remind us of how wonderful God is. Even now, during this time with the COVID-19 virus, we can see God's presence. When we spend time with our families, when we see the hard work of nurses and doctors, and when people help others who are in need, we know God is here and God will be with us when this virus finally ends. As you look at the flowers and the trees and the lightning bugs and the fall leaves and the snowflakes and all the ways people are helping each other, I want you to remember that these are God's special ways to remind us that God is with us in every season and every time during our life. And that's a good thing to know. So let's close with the prayer together. Let us pray. Loving God, we know that you are always with us, no matter what season or time of our lives. You have promised us that you will never leave us alone. Thank you for your promises and all your reminders that you are always with us. And all God's children say, Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm 91, 1 through 10. This is the beginning of the section entitled, Assurance of God's Protection. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor scourge come near your tent. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. And hear the word of God from Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, 
a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to loose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I grew up on what is now called the Lockhart Highway or Highway 49. And before that, at one time, it was called Highway 97. And before that, that segment of road was part of the old Pinckney Highway. Now, some of the local historians around home say that if you could go back to the first days of October 1780 and sit in my grandfather's front yard, that you just might see young men carrying muskets headed for King's Mountain to fight in that battle for the Patriots. And later on, you just might see young men traveling that road to go fight with Andrew Jackson in the War of 1812. And then a little later than that, to go fight with Captain Robert E. Lee in the Mexican-American War. Now, my grandfather used to talk about 40 going north. And so one day I asked him, what do you mean by 40 going north? And he said that volunteers, those men who volunteered to serve in the Confederate Army, would be formed in companies of 40 and then march north to fight the Union Army. And time and again, I would hear my grandfather say, that person went up the road like 40 going north. If you would sit there on part of Old Pinckney Road, you might see 40 going north. Or see young men going off to the Spanish-American War to fight with Teddy Roosevelt. Or to be a doughboy in World War I a GI in the Second World War and Korea, uh, to be GI Joes in Vietnam and the Persian Gulf. That indeed, you would see a parade of heroes marching off to defend our nation from time to time, young men and young women willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause, willing to serve our nation, willing to defend a nation that is worthy of being defended. On this Memorial Day weekend, we are reminded that we are to honor and mourn those who have served in our nation's military and have paid the ultimate sacrifice, those who have served and died, uh, to honor and to mourn. At 5 a.m. in the morning of November the 11th, 1918, a document was signed, an armistice was signed, that would end the war at 11 a.m. Between 5 a.m. that morning and 11 a.m. that morning, more than 11,000 soldiers were wounded or killed just in that short period of time 
waiting for the war to end. The last soldier killed in World War I was Henry Gunter. He died at 10.59 a.m., one minute to 11, charging a German machine gun nest. When the war between the states began, both the North and the South were shocked at the number of people who were killed in battle. They, no, they had no idea of such large casualties and they did not know what to do with the bodies. There was no organized plan so that the dead would be on the battlefield for weeks or months at a time. And finally, uh, the Union Army established a graves and registration unit that would seek out the bodies of Union soldiers, identify those bodies, and bury those bodies. And those cemeteries became national cemeteries, such as Arlington. Many Confederate soldiers were buried in unmarked graves. The North and the South were shocked by the horrors of war. World War II was fought by what has been described as the greatest generation. That is, young men and women who grew up in the Depression, graduated from high school into the military, served in World War II, and came home to rebuild a broken world. For more than 407,000 military personnel, American military personnel, were killed in World War II. Among them were the five Sullivan brothers. They served on a light cruiser, the USS Juno, that was torpedoed by a German submarine. Three of them died instantly when their ship exploded. The other two died waiting to be rescued. Imagine their parents, that in a moment, in a split second of time, they would lose all five of their sons in military service. We're called to honor and mourn on this Memorial Day weekend. In the first church that I served in Statesville, there was a woman who seldom left home. I arranged to visit her, and she met me at the door, invited me to sit on the end of the couch next to a table with a lamp and a telephone, and her easy chair was on the other side of that table. It was a well-worn chair. And she began to explain to me that her young son was an army ranger in World War II and that he had been missing in action. He had been missing, he had been listed as missing in action. She had received a letter from the War Department and that letter stated that they would contact her as soon as they found more information about his whereabouts. And in the fall of 1974, she was still sitting by that phone waiting for it to ring, hoping to hear something about her son, or maybe even to hear, to hear his voice. And when she died, he was still listed as missing, missing in action. We know about the wall, the Vietnam wall, the war memorial wall, the wall that lists all of those who were killed in action in Vietnam, 58,220 military personnel, men and women. 
That war divided our country. And that wall has become a place of healing and mourning, of grieving, of dealing with the pain and suffering of war. And many people have left, have left behind various little things of great importance. From a teddy bear to a pack of cigarettes to well-worn combat boots, tracings of the names are made. That indeed, we hold those individuals in our hearts. We honor and mourn those who have been lost. May the 8th, 1945 was Victory in Europe Day. 75 years ago, this month, World War II ended in Europe. We continue the process of remembering and honoring and mourning and giving thanks for those who have served. On this Memorial Day weekend, we have also been asked to honor and remember those who have been killed by this coronavirus, that flags are being flown at half staff. In this season of honoring and mourning, we rejoice again for all those who were willing to go forward and serve our nation and to give of themselves even unto death. Let us pray. O oh Lord, again, we, we do thank you for the men and women who have served our nation faithfully down through the generations. Continue to be with our, na with our nation in this moment and in the days to come. Be with those who serve now in uniform. Lord, bless and keep us as a nation. Make us strong so that we may serve and give and indeed be a beacon of hope and light to the world around us, a beacon of freedom and hope. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
And now, may the roads rise to meet you. May the winds be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. <laughs>